the sixth mansion chapter five of the interior castle this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by anne boulet the interior castle or the mansions by saint teresa of avila translated by the rev john dalton the sixth mansion chapter five the same discourse is continued there is another kind of rapture which i call the flight of the spirit though it is the same in substance as the ordinary rapture yet it is felt to be very different in the interior for sometimes there is perceived on a sudden a movement of the soul so swift that the spirit seems to be hurried away with a violent speed this at first causes great fear and therefore i told you that the person on whom god intends to bestow these favors stands in need of great courage and likewise of faith and confidence and perfect resignation into the hands of our lord to do with the soul whatever he pleaseth do you think it is a small trouble for one to enjoy his senses perfectly and see his soul carried away we read that some have even their bodies raised also without knowing whither it goes or who carries it or how it is carried in the commencement of this sudden movement there is not so much certainty that it comes from god but is there any means of resisting it none whatever rather it is all the worse for the soul for i know this is the case with a certain person hence it seems god wishes to signify to the soul that as she has so often and so truly resigned herself into his hands and with so sincere a will wholly offered herself to him she must understand that now she has no more right to herself and hence she is evidently raised up with a more impetuous motion the person of whom i spoke resolved to act no more than the straw does when it is attracted by amber if you ever noticed it and to surrender herself into his hands who is so powerful for she sees it is the safest plan for her to make a virtue of necessity and because i mention straw it is certain that as easily as a strong man can lift it up so can our strong and mighty giant lift up the soul thus it seems that whereas before the cistern of water we spoke of i suppose in the fourth mansion for i do not remember well was filled with great sweetness and stillness i mean without noise so now this great god who keeps in the springs of water and allows not the sea to overflow its bounds here lets loose the streams and currents from which the water came and this running with great violence makes such a flood that it raises on high this little vessel of our soul on this account as neither a ship nor a pilot nor those who command it are able to make the raging and furious billows let it rest where the captain wishes so much less can the interior of the soul remain where it would desire nor can it cause the senses and faculties to do more than what they are commanded for here no notice is to be taken of the exterior i am certainly astonished sisters by merely writing these remarks concerning how the immense power of this great king and emperor is here manifested to us what will he feel then who experiences this same power for my own part i believe that if his majesty discovered himself to the most abandoned men of the world in the same manner as he does to these souls they would avoid offending him if not through love at least through fear oh how much are those obliged who have been instructed by so sublime a way to endeavor with all their strength never to displease this lord by him i beseech you sisters i speak to those on whom our lord has bestowed such favors that you be not negligent and content with only receiving consider that whoever owes much should also pay much for this great courage is necessary for it terrifies one exceedingly and if our lord did not bestow this on the soul she would always be in great affliction and if he did not animate her she would no doubt be disheartened considering how his majesty acts with her and reflecting also upon herself that serves him so little in comparison to what she is obliged to do and this very little which she does is full of failings imperfections and tepidity in order therefore that she may not remember how imperfectly she performs any work if she does any she thinks it best to endeavor to forget it and to place her sins continually before her eyes relying on god's mercy and beseeching him that since she has nothing to pay him with the pity and mercy which he has always shown towards sinners may supply her defect 
he may perhaps give her the answer which he gave to a certain person who was in great distress before a crucifix from considering that she never had anything to give to god or to abandon for his sake to whom the crucified said comforting her by these words that he gave her all the labors and pains which he suffered in his passion and that she was to consider them as her own and offer them to his father the soul immediately became so rich and so consoled as i heard from the person herself that she cannot yet forget it but every time that she sees herself so miserable the remembrance of these words animates and consoles her many such things i could mention here which i know well by having spoken with so many persons of devotion and prayer but lest you might think i was alluding to myself i will not speak of them this seems to me very useful for showing you how much our lord is pleased with our knowing ourselves and with our continually endeavoring to consider again and again our poverty and misery and how we have nothing except what we have received hence my sisters courage is necessary for this and for many other things which happen to a soul which our lord has already conducted to this state and in my opinion if there be humility more courage is necessary for this latter favor than for any other i mean for considering our poverty and misery may our lord in his mercy grant it to us let us return now to this sudden rapture of the spirit the rapture takes place in such a manner that the soul really seems to go out of the body and yet on the other hand it is evident that the person is not dead at least she cannot say whether for a few moments the soul be in the body or not it seems to her that she has been altogether in another region quite different from this world in which we live and there another light is shown to her very different from this here below and though she should employ all her life long in trying to form an idea of this and other wonders yet it would be impossible to understand them she is in an instant taught so many things together that should she spend many years in arranging them in her thoughts and imagination she could not remember the one thousandth part of them this is not an intellectual but an imaginary vision and it is seen with the eyes of the soul much better than we see things here with the eyes of the body and without words certain things are discovered to her if she should see any of the saints she knows them as well as if she had conversed with them for a length of time at other times together with what she beholds with the eyes of the soul other wonders are there represented to her by the intellectual vision particularly a multitude of angels with their lord and without seeing anything with her corporeal eyes by a wonderful knowledge which i cannot express this of which i am speaking and many other things are represented to her which are not to be mentioned whoever shall experience these things himself and shall have better abilities than i possess may perhaps be able to explain them however difficult they may appear to be whether all these things take place in the body or no i cannot say at least i would not swear it is in the body nor that the body is without the soul i have often thought how when the sun is in the heavens his rays have such force that without the sun changing his place they immediately reach this earth and so it is here for the soul and the spirit which are one and the same just as the sun and the rays are though remaining in her place that is in the body may by virtue of the heat communicated to her from the true sun of justice soar above herself in the superior part in a word i know not what i say the truth is that with the same swiftness with which a bullet passes out of a gun when the fire is applied so does a flight take place in the interior of the soul i know no other name for it which though it makes no noise still causes a movement so manifest that in no manner can it be taken as the effect of fancy and as the soul is as it were out of herself as far as i can understand great secrets are revealed to her and when she returns again to her senses it is with such immense gain and with such contempt for all earthly things that everything seems mean to her in comparison with what she has seen ever after she lives in the world with great regret and she cares not at all for any of those things which once used to seem beautiful to her it seems our lord was pleased to show her something of that land towards which she is going as those of the people of israel who were sent beforehand to the land of promise brought back things which show the nature of the country 
in order that she may endure the difficulties of this journey and may know where she must hasten to find true repose and though that which passes away so quickly may seem to you not to be very profitable yet so great are the benefits it leaves in the soul that he only who has experienced them can tell their worth hence we may clearly see that such things do not come from the devil and that they should come from our own imagination is impossible since the devil can represent nothing which leaves in the soul such great effects such peace such quiet and profit and especially three things are left in a high degree the first is a knowledge of the greatness of god for the more we see of it the more we are able to understand it the second is the knowledge of ourselves and humility in considering how base we are in comparison with the creator of so many wonderful things and how we have dared to offend him how we dare not to look upon him the third is a contempt for all earthly things unless there be some which she can apply to the service of so great a god these are the jewels which the spouse begins to give his bride and they are so valuable that she will be most careful of them for these visions are so ingrained in her memory that i believe it is impossible for her to forget them till she gets possession of them for ever unless it be through her own fault but the spouse who gives them to her is able to bestow his grace upon her so that she may never lose them but to return to the courage of which she stands in need do you think it is so trifling a matter the soul really seems separated from the body because she sees the senses lost and does not understand for what purpose it is necessary then that he who gives all the other gifts should give this also you will reply this fear is well rewarded i say the same may he be blessed for ever who can give so liberally and may his majesty be pleased to grant that we may be worthy to serve him amen end of the sixth mansion chapter five